Overworking in watercolor is a big issue because we want to paint as fresh as we can. One of the biggest causes of overworking your painting is actually one of the easiest to fix, and that is your brush selection. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And you're going to want to stay tuned till the end of today's video because I'm going to talk about one of my favorite brushes that also happens to be one of the most affordable. Having small, repetitive brush marks all over your painting makes the painting feel very busy. It looks very labored over. So one easy way to fix this problem is to start to think more about the big shapes of your scene and pick a bigger paintbrush. Of course, there are moments in the painting where you need to get those fine details of the scene. That comes at the end of your painting. But so often I see students grab that really small brush towards the beginning of the painting when we really need to use a bigger brush. So a good rule of thumb for this is you want to go from big to small. So when you first start in your painting, you're going to want to use a large mop brush because you're covering a lot of the paper in one go. Then when you move into the middle phase of your painting where you are creating a large connected shape, you want to use a medium round brush. And then finally, when you get towards the end of your painting and you're adding those finishing touches and little details, that's when you want to use a smaller brush. So here are some benefits to painting with a larger brush. Number one is water control. Larger brushes hold more water and more paint, and they enable you to cover a larger area before you reload your brush. And also, the pigment that you were putting on your paper can be thicker with more paint and more water which will dry slower and enable you to paint into this large shape of the scene for a longer amount of time. If you're using a small brush, you're often going back and reloading. Because that smaller brush isn't holding enough paint, you aren't making a large fluid wash. You're leaning more towards dry brushing on your paper. And when that happens, you just have a couple seconds to come back to that edge before it dries. The next benefit to using a larger brush is expressiveness. You can create large sweeping movements. Learning to create a variety of brush strokes, including with a larger brush, really adds something interesting to your painting. And I touched on this earlier, but one of the benefits of using a larger brush is to avoid overworking. So just think about how many brush strokes that you need to cover an area with a small brush versus a larger brush. Painting is a little bit like golf. You want to accomplish what you're trying to do in the least amount of strokes as possible. Painting with a larger brush encourages confident brush strokes. You can loosen up a bit more with a bigger brush. This can really help you have a more spontaneous approach. If you're not hovering over your painting, thinking about all the small marks, but instead thinking about the larger shapes and painting them in a more confident and bold way. So those are the reasons to really look at using a larger brush. Really think about this and make sure that you have the right brush in your hand because it does make a big difference. And before I let you go today, I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite brushes. This is not a sponsorship or a commercial. It's a brush that I like to use often that's pretty affordable. This brush is from a site called Cheap Joe's Dot com and it is the Miller's Pseudo Sable Brush Round Size 12. And this is just kind of a workhorse brush. It's really good for painting that middle value shape or creating value studies. It holds a fair amount of paint and water and it's more affordable than an authentic sable brush. If you're looking to get just a standard medium sized round brush to use, this brush has been a really good option for me. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I want to give to you today that can help with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. 
All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.